And we are back. So welcome everybody again. We are here from Global Marketing Day at the London's, London Studios. Uh, my name is Fernando Angulo, Head of Communications at SEM Rush. We are going to have a new great presentation. Actually, we have a little bit, a little bit, some changes here uh, in our program. Chad West uh, couldn't make it, so I'm going to be his replacement. All good, all set up. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk about um, feature snippets. Let's talk about uh, voice search because that's is the trend right now. And of course, we have our guest experts coming back again. Uh, our colleague and friend, Craig Campbell. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for having me back. Thank you for coming back again. And you have some interesting stuff over there, right? I just bring some props and stuff just to add a bit more fun, um, just to cover up. And I don't know what I'm talking about. Reminding everyone <laughs> to use the hashtag Global Marketing Day. So go for it. And we have, uh, as well, James uh, Finlayson. Yeah. Hi. I pronounce it perfectly. Okay, perfect. Head of Inno Innovation at Verve Search. Yeah, great to be here. Okay, perfect. So we're going to have the 50 minutes presentation. After that, the 50 minute dis discussion with our guest panel panelists. And let's just start then. So, these days we are searching for different stuff on the internet. Right now, we are searching uh, for the things that are most important for us, of course. That's why this topic is called Content for People and Content for Google. This is us. This is SEMrush. We are data providers. We are already on the market 11 years. We, are, we have more than 700 empl employees all over the world. And, of course, we have more than 4 million users. These are some mentions that we received from media. Uh, thank you very much, Forbes, Entrepreneur, Inc. And of course, thank you all for uh, being so good with us. These are some of the clients that we, th that we have, uh, and we receive a lot of knowledge from them on how to perform better with the development of our tools. So thanks to these companies and over 10,000 agencies, we have the knowledge about what uh, what they are doing and of course we know their pains as you can see here we know why you're suffering Jim it's kind of difficult to run an agency right it is a lot, 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 easy. lot of work so for doing that we find out that you can uh, you can have a lot of good results but just using some uh, techniques tools but if you want to perform better and be the one, uh, you need to have the real knowledge about your users. That's why you need to understand how Google is translating that all that information that they own to their users. So let's start uh, with this question. How to get great results for your clients, for your users? And let's see this. This is how people are usually searching for, uh, for, for their needs on Google. Uh, for example, I was searching top business metrics, right? And I received this kind of results. That is a uh, feature snippet, as you can see, is a list, is a really big one. And we have the people also ask box, uh, box below that. Next one, you can see here how digital uh, agencies work. So I'm asking a question right now. I'm just not looking for information. I'm actually want to know how step by step. And I received an information on a beautiful snippet with an, uh, with an image and also several all, uh, other kind of um, questions with the people also ask box. And of course, I was searching for me and I also have my own feature snippet just saying who is Fernando Angulo. So he's working on, on, on SEMrush. And I don't have my own web page, but I, I have a profile on SEMrush and I have my uh, feature snippet. That's a good thing, right? Of course, more exposure. Yes, it's a good thing to be on, it's a good thing to have a feature snippet, but being on a feature snippet is even better. So how we can optimize the content that you already have for uh, acquiring a feature snippet. So that's why we have analyzed 6.9 million of feature snippets and we tr try to identify the key parameters on how to uh, get one of them. And we also analyze 80 million keywords, so those keywords that, uh, that are activating those feature snippets to understand, okay, how, how many questions uh, there need to be, how many other type of, key of keywords. And we found out a lot of interesting stuff. So if you already go with me, why you need to care about this? 
Let's start with that. So you're gonna have more traffic. A feature snippet, as you saw at the beginning, is a great result. Why? Because it's, I'm in a, I'm in a laptop right now, 13-inch uh, uh, MacBook Pro or a, a Dell. Uh, wherever you, are, uh, you have, you're gonna have that big space right over there in the search page, uh, pay, in the search page results. So you have all the knowledge, or you have all the branding, uh, brand awareness over there. And if you are good at it, you're gonna do it really, really fast. As you can see here, uh, there's not much uh, technology behind, there's not much, not much knowledge uh, behind. You just need to have the uh, appropriate format for uh, acquiring feature snippets. And if you earn a feature snippet, you will have Lots of revenue. I'm gonna show you how in, in, in just in a, few, in a few moments. And of course, the most important thing that I believe from the beginning since uh, Sydney's uh, translation, we are talking about voice search. Feature snippets are the foundations of voice search. Why? Let's take some numbers. So. You already saw this uh, study, so this is a, just a small part of it. This is a, a, a research that we made uh, here at SEMrush based on voice search. We analyzed 20,000 20, uh, queries in three devices, and we found out eight key ranking factors. So we analyzed the Google Home, the Home Mini, and, the, uh, and the, uh, an Android device, and from that, I need to point out that we took information only from uh, Google devices because the data, the source of data uh, that we were working is coming only from Google. You have several uh, other assistants, like for example, um, Alexa, Cortana, Siri, but the main one, because of the source of the data uh, that we use for this research is mainly Google. So for doing this, as you can see here, um, we ask two computers, two robots, two machines to talk with each other. That didn't work very well because they don't understand quite well what they were saying. So that's why we hired um, a guy and we put it in a box and he was just repeating uh, the 20,000 search queries but he's not working with us anymore. That was three months ago. But we have the results and the results are really interesting. Why? Because we found out that 80% of the answers that are coming for, uh, for, for a voice search query are coming for the top, from the top three organic results. Those top three organic results are these ones. You can see here, first is 60%. They are coming from feature snippets. 11% are coming from the people also ask uh, results. So that's an impressive number. So that means that our theory we think a lot about this, is uh, positive. Why? Because feature snippets and people also ask are really the foundation of voice search. As you can see here, they are not only coming with uh, people also ask, but we have different other search features that they are there with the voice search results. As you can see here, for example, uh, how many airports in USA? You can see the text that the Google Assistant is uh, taking as the first result is taken from a feature snippet, as you can see here. Or the next question, um, it is, uh, is it healthy to eat squash? This result from the Google Assistant is coming not from the feature snippet, but from the uh, uh, people also ask box. So, they are taking their information from those type of results. So it's a good decision, it's a good choice to earn one of them. That's why we need to understand how uh, they are categorized, uh, how they are um, classified. So we find out that there are three types of feature snippets for now. Uh, the paragraph feature snippet, which is like that, it's just a paragraph, it's a piece of text. Uh, the second type is a list. Uh, it can be ordered or unordered. And the third part, uh, the third type of feature snippet is a table, which is my favorite one. Why? Because you can put a lot of information over there. As you can see here in the example, you have the year, the name, you have uh, some other comments. So this kind of results is really, really interesting. So. Let's talk about the keywords that are activating those feature snippets. So let's understand a little bit. And we have three types, mostly, of keywords, of type of keywords that are activating those feature snippets. The uh, biggest portion uh, are the question keywords, 
of course, how, what, where, etc. The, this number is, in, uh, is increasing every single year. So for any question in any industry, you will receive a feature snippet or a people also ask a box. I'm gonna show you with, with numbers. And of course, the second portion are the preposition feature snippets, which are 70%. Uh, so uh, the preposition keywords that are activating feature snippets. And the last one are the comparison keywords that are also activating uh, feature snippets. So you have the keyword and you have the uh, feature snippet. Let's see which type of uh, feature snippets uh, are being activated by these keywords. So. With the, key, uh, with the question keywords, as you can see here, the question keywords mainly are activating the paragraph feature snippet. For the question why, uh, do, can, is, should, all those questions, uh, all those keywords are activating the paragraph, but there is one, which is the uh, exception of the, of the main rule, which is how. The question, all the questions starting with how, they can activate the list feature snippet and also the paragraph feature snippet. So you can choose from them, just reformatting, reformatting the content that you have by choosing with the question how, how to open a bank account, how to tie a tie, how to boil an egg, how to, uh, I don't know, acquire a car, how to rent a motorcycle, whatever. And you, you can transform the content that you own with a list and you will receive that list. Of course, you, can, um, you need to use uh, not as, as many words. I'm gonna show you that with the results of this uh, research. For example, why uh, is the sky blue? In every single country that, I, uh, that I've been, and for the last three years I've been in like five, 55 countries, they have uh, this feature snippet with an image that the, that image ha uh, ha uh, has the right format. I'm going to show you that as well. And the text, which is very easy to understand. Preposition feature snippet. So you may say uh, preposition keywords. So the preposition keywords are like this one, for, like, to, with, without. You are not asking a question anymore, you are just uh, searching for details of a product or a service using uh, natural language with prepositions. So you are looking for uh, specific parts of services or products. Let's say like here, for example, iPhone without SIM card, right? Or house with two bedrooms, or car with uh, winter wheels you are using only uh, prepositions with those, uh, th those type of search queries, and you will receive, of course, maybe shopping results, the, the, the product listing ads, or you will receive a beautiful feature snippet. As you can see that is, uh, uh, in our example, using also uh, prepositions, uh, key preposition keywords, is also a good choice for acquiring feature snippets. And the last one, and the most interesting one for e-commerce uh, businesses is the comparison feature snippet. So the comparison feature snippet is really interesting because of this, this word, uh, compare, pricing, price, comparing. But if you can see at the numbers, uh, when we are uh, mentioning the word price, when people are searching something, something, price, they're uh, already in the last part of the uh, budget journey. So they are really up to buy something. And as you can see here, for this type of result, Google is given the table feature snippet, which is interesting to compare the price, for example, of an iPhone, of the price of a Samsung, the price of a Toyota, or the price of a Kia. So you can put all that information in a feature snippet. Let's see the example. So oh, this is a good example. Princess cut versus Ront when you are trying to uh, buy a ring, a wedding ring, right? So for this type of products, they are are really expensive. You can see the, um, the blue Nile, $75,000 for the ring. So you as a person, you need more information to make the right choice. And you can, as a company, as a brand, you can put that, all that information why you need to spend $75,000 on a feature snippet right over there. You have all the choices, but you are comparing which is the best choice. And you have the paragraph feature snippet explaining why you need to choose the princess versus the round cut. So you can use all that information also for your business purposes. And let's say, let's put all these things in a persona, in, in a buyer persona research. For example, we have the small family, we have the millennials, we have the single woman, we know already all their 
details and their pains. And of course, for example, let's go with the small family. They have uh, two kids, they want to acquire a house or maybe to rent an apartment. We as a company, for example, we need to understand what they are looking to build all kind of res results. Uh, the pain points, they are looking for something uh, not that expensive, they are, uh, they want not, uh, they're not looking on the second market, they are lo looking for something new. So we already uh, made our research. Let's put all those information about feature snippet on this kind of um, buyer's journey. So for example, we have three main points, which, is, which are uh, awareness, consideration, and decision. Let's put all the information about what, um, what are the possibilities of the houses, all the questions from the beginning with the, uh, with the questions related to feature snippet. Uh, do I need to buy a house or rent an apartment? Uh, where are the uh, families um, most, uh, I don't know, uh, transport connected areas? All the questions related to our first uh, search uh, integration with, um, with our needs needs to be already on a feature snippet with the awareness part. For the second one, okay, we already know more about the topic, oh, where do I need to find an apartment, uh, what I'm looking, a house or uh, um, renting a, 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 a apartment or house. We are going with the preposition keywords there just to identify a house with a garage, house with a pool, or apartment in the street uh, X. We are going mostly with details or brokers with, uh, without contract or free brokers, wherever that includes a preposition. That's the consideration part because you are not asking questions anymore. You already know a little bit about what you want, but you want to know the details. But for the last part, which is the decision in this path, you can see uh, all the keywords, you can uh, have all the, all the keywords that are comparing. Uh, house versus uh, house in the street A versus department in the street B, B, house in London or house in Brighton, department. So you are gonna do some comparisons there and you need already to have all those results based on people's needs uh, to have um, feature snippet with that kind of information. So this is something that you can use actually with any kind of marketing strategy how you can format the content that you have for earning feature snippets. So let's start with the number of words. So the number of words in an average that we found out that are there in a feature snippet, the, the paragraph, are 46, maximum 84. But we will go with an average, as you can see here, 43, 46, that's, uh, that's the limit. So use uh, text, paragraph of text, in a range of 40 to uh, 60 words, be succinct, don't go with walls of text, don't use much text on those paragraphs, only uh, 40 uh, to 60 words. And also we found out that the um, structure of the content needs to be really, really um, a hierarchy one. Why? Because you're using H1, H2, H3, you're using most of them. And of course, this is not the kind of content that we can use in every single page, but this is the kind of content that you will use responding people's questions, users' questions. For those uh, um, type of um, blog posts, for example, that are explaining how to use your services, how to um, use any product, this is the kind of a structure that you can have, question by question by question, title, and then the, the format, the right format for the paragraph, for the list, or for the table. As you can see here, another result that we found out that most of the, the top performers here, they are already HTTPS. That's something that uh, I, I believe every single website they need, to, they need to have because of the trust, because of the security, and because that's something that Google maybe will say someday, okay, you need to be HTTPS or we're not showing. Actually, they're, they're doing right now that yeah. on the browser, yeah. so yeah. if you're not HTTPS, you're not gonna be there. So if your website is HTTP, you need to migrate to HTTPS. Another thing, how easy uh, the content needs to be 
for uh, people uh, in order to make them understand it. As you can see, the Flesh King Kite algorithm, the, uh, the scoring needs to be 83. That means that a seven grade, a 12 years old a kid, uh, they need to be able to understand this kind of information because it's really easy and important for everybody, if you are using a mobile device, to understand what your um, what's the uh, answer to your question really, really fast. That's why the language needs to be really, really easy. And another thing that we found out here is the amount of images, 12 images in each URL. And of course, uh, the most interesting thing is that you need to use an alt text explaining what is on that image. Of course, uh, with the image recognition AI that Google owns, uh, it should be something that, okay, they know what is in the picture, but we found out if you are not using that alt text, there are a lot of probabilities that your image not gonna, is not gonna be shown on that featured snippet. Google is, is gonna push uh, another source and they're gonna link it to that source with the right uh, with, with the right format. Uh, the number of links in each URL, 33 uh, external citations, and of course we have the list snippets. You, if you put more items there, you will have more uh, possibilities to earn that button that says read more, uh, see more items, for example. You can do the same uh, with the table snippets. As you can see here, more than eight items, you will have more information. So. With all this information about the feature snippets, I would like to start our uh, discussion, our, pan our panel discussion here, uh, starting from the uh, main uh, question. How difficult is to earn a feature snippet these days? Let's go with you, Craig. It's, it's not necessarily difficult. I think you, you, you know, have to just implement schema markup, and obviously it's a pain uh, to do it manually, but the best recommendations are to do it manually. Everyone thinks there's a plug in there that's going to do it for you. Um, so it's relatively easy if you're prepared to put in the, the work. And as, as you said, you don't have to do it on every page. You know, the most important pages, the, the FEQ pages, whatever you've got there um, to, to be able to do that. So it's, it's easy to do. There's a million guides online. So, you know, you, I don't think you have to be a technical whiz to be able to do it, um, and if you, if you're not, you know, you're lazy or whatever, just give it to a guy and then let some specialist do it. For, you know, it, it's relatively easy to do. Um, outsource it as well, so you've got various options there. But I would always stress to stay away from plugins because everyone just wants the dream plugin to do it all for you, and sadly, there isn't one that does it that well yet. So. I think, ironically, uh, the easiest ones to get um, are the ones that people, few people actually spend any time looking at, which is for their own brand terms. Because by the time someone's searching for information around that brand, they're pretty close to actually converting. So we spoke to a household brand a, a, about a year ago, and we said, look, if you Google the name of your product plus ingredients, like the third result is someone claiming that it will give them cancer. Now, if you get that featured snippet in there, you're pushing everyone down, and they'll automatically A, rank first for it so they control that conversation, but you get the featured snippet. And now, no one's looking at position three in any case because you've pushed all the results so far down. So understanding what people are searching around your own brand and controlling those conversations for conversion now, but also for future crisis management, super easy ones to get. Oh, that's, that's true. If you have this um, type of result using, for example, schema markups, as, as, as you were mentioning, uh, you will have this uh, feature snippet faster. Because I remember in, uh, in a conference, I, be I believe the last Brighton SEO, uh, um, they were asking from the people to Google if it's necessary to, to use schema markups in order to build a feature snippet. They say no. I mean, I've had feature snippets um, and not used any schema, so it can happen. Um, you know, I wouldn't always believe everything that Google say. Because Google don't want to say, you have to do this because we'll all be fighting over feature snippets. So they're kind of saying, well, maybe, maybe not. And I think, you know, I think it would make perfect sense, just in my own opinion, um, that if you were to add schema, then you're going to get it quicker. I, I, I don't, I believe that. Google are trying to throw people off the scent by suggesting that it's not the case. Although I have had some feature snippets, although they're kind of weak, very, you know, ones that no one else is going after um, without any schema, I think as time progresses, you're going to have to implement schema because if someone's got schema and you don't, 
why would Google give you that doesn't have schema the feature snippet? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I would just throw that out there um, just as a, a way to think about it. Yeah, apart from anything else, once you've got it set up, in the future, if they launch some new form of schema, you can add it to that page a lot easier because you've got the framework in place. So I, I agree. I, there are instances where you can get it without, but like you want to be having it there so that it's easier for search engines to understand the page itself, understand the, the data versus uh, Chrome of the whole page, but also to set yourself up nicely for the future. True. We have, well, we have a lot of questions on YouTube. Let's start with uh, Katie Schenk. She's asking, uh, when you got limited resources and a site with a large amount of content, how will you uh, prioritize which type? For example, for parag paragraph, list, tables, and which keywords type you should be working first? Where to start? I mean, I think you'd have to use a common sense approach. You know, tables could be something, you know, if you're an e-commerce website or a, a price comparison website or whatever, that, that would be the first thing you go for. Whereas for me personally, as a guy who does a lot of tutorials or how to use SEMrush or, you know, stuff like that, then that would be... The, the first type of schema I would implement. So it's different for different purposes, really. Um, you just have to use, you know, go what is going to convert into money, uh, monetary value or the best search volume or whatever. You know, do your research and then implement what you feel will convert better. Obviously, prices are something that people do look for. So if you're selling a product as such, um, then, you know, price and table would be a great place to start, I think. Yeah, I think, I mean, th there's two ways to look at it. Firstly, uh, is there stuff that you can do at the template level that then affects a huge amount of pages? Stuff like if you've got your, uh, your uh, tables in there, is the way you can just affect it across all tables? Uh, but then just look at your best performing content. Because if you've got content that's already ranking well, then adding it in there means you're more likely to get those, uh, rather than trying to revamp content that's already not ranking particularly well and therefore stands a low chance of even getting them when you have it correctly. I can to look at it. Do we need to use schema uh, markups in every single page of our website? No. Definitely not. I mean, di different pages are set up for different purposes, and I, you know, I don't think you always have to go for a feature snippet. Yeah, I, I, people probably argue, well, why wouldn't you want a feature snippet for every page in your website? But there are certain pages in people's websites that are not geared up to necessarily capture those positions, do you know what I mean? So um, in most cases, I'd probably say you would probably want to, but yeah, not every case. So I believe we're done with the time. Thank you so much, James, for being here. Thank you, Craig, for being, for being no here. Worries. Everybody's talking about feature snippets these days, so we do because that's the trend and that's something good to have. And as we uh, heard today, uh, schema is something good to have you cannot have it, it's that good. You don't need to use it that on every single page. So thank you to our guest. Let's continue with the Global Marketing Day. If you have any questions, continue the conversation, please, on every social uh, media channel, and we are here as well.